Derek Midgley was elected president of the Competing Pipers Association in 2020, becoming the first non-resident of Scotland to hold the post. Last year, he was elected to another three-year term, overseeing the important union of competitive solo pipers with several other elected officials and active committees. Unlike much of the rest of the world, the UK does not have an association that sanctions and manages all or even most competitions. The CPA's primary goal is to manage the grading of solo pipers, 18 and older, who want to compete in what would usually be graded as open or professional levels. Adult solo pipers in the UK who consider themselves amateurs, or grade 1, grade 2, etc. elsewhere, can join and compete in events run by the Competition League for Amateur Solo Pipers, or CLASP. The CPA and CLASP don't overlap. The CPA was started in 1976 when entry to the major non-formal winners events at the Northern Meeting at Inverness and Oban's Argyllshire Gathering were unrestricted. Nearly 70 pipers back then were competing in the Highland Society of London gold medal contests, the events running nearly 14 hours. Something had to be done, so the CPA was formed, and the organization started a grading system, breaking pipers into different levels. The CPA also introduced and sponsored the silver medal PIBRA competitions as a way to alleviate demand on the gold medals, as well as level the playing field. Over the years, a C-grade was brought in, and a few years ago, under Midgley's watch, a new bronze medal PIBRA contest was created, again to alleviate entries to the silver medal. To those who have grown up with North America's solo competition structure, the Scottish way of doing things can be confusing. Unlike in most of the rest of the world, events that hold solo contests in the morning and bands in the afternoon are rare. Though most solo pipers also play with a band, the two worlds are essentially separate. Glenn Brown was the first Canadian-born president of the CPA, and now Derek Midgley also provides insights from his North American experience and knowledge. Midgley is from Tinton Falls, New Jersey. He began piping at the age of 12, taught by the famous George Bell of Parlin, New Jersey. Midgley receives instruction now from Roddy McLeod. Among his many prizes are the Silver Medal and B March at the Northern Meeting, and prizes in the Highland Society of London's Gold Medals and A-Grade Light Music events at both Oban and Inverness. He's won the A-Grade MSR, Hornpipe and Jig, and Peabrook at the Scottish Piping Society of London's competitions, the Dunvegan Medal and Open 2-4 and 6-8 marches at Skye, the Loch Arbor Axe for Senior Peabrook at Fort William, Scotland, and the Light Music at the Royal Highland Gathering. He's won a raft of events in North America, including the Peabrook Society Canada Gold Medal and Bar, the Metro Cup Peabrook, the United States Piping Foundation Peabrook four times, and the USPF overall in 2022. He's been a member of Grade 1 Band, City of Washington, Toronto Police, and Scottish Power, and is currently a member of St. Thomas Alumni. He's on the adjudication panel of the Eastern United States Pipe Band Association and currently serves as the EUSPBA's Metro Branch Chairman. As part of Pipe Strum's ongoing association leadership series, we caught up with Derek Midgley for a brief conversation. It is March 8, 2024, and we are happy to be continuing our association leadership series with Derek Midgley, president of the Competing Pipers Association. Thanks very much for taking the time, Derek. Uh, Great to talk to you today. Thank you for having me. Tell us what's been going on with the CPA. Yes, uh, the CPA, like we do every year, just finished up our grading sort of season, if you like, and has gone back to dormancy for the next few months. Um, the the grading thing, the grading cycle, if you like, is December to end of uh, January, then where we get all of our members' track records, get graded, Open Inverness has the eligibility meeting. We present to them, we talk to them, they, they spit out the results for what they want for the gold and silver medals. And uh, basically we shut down again the grading till next year. And the next thing is the Duncan Johnston contest in a few weeks from now. So those are the two things that we're doing at the moment. Yeah, and, and you're now into your second three-year term, the first year, I guess, of your second three-year term. Um, and I guess year four total of, of your presidency uh, as the first uh, non-UK resident to be running the organization or at the head of the organization. Maybe talk about a few highlights that you've uh, experienced over the, the last while. For me, it's kind of like dog years. Uh, four years seems like a long time when you get into the CPA. So 
let me say this. If anybody else wants to be president, they're more than welcome to. Uh, this term doesn't have to finish. Um, but uh, no, the highlights are certainly uh, the bronze medal for us. Uh, one of the our pet projects, getting that off the ground, got a little bit extra funding for that and trying to appeal to the broader sense of our organization. We have many more members, I can look here real quick, in the B and C grades. So whilst you obviously, you guys know that um, Open Everness focuses on the clasp, the gold and silver medal, the next sort of 100 pipers, um, we have our membership in just the P brick here, uh, 11P, 28A, 50, 58B, but then 95 and C. So with the bronze medal, we've been able to help with that pressure to the silver medal. And hopefully we can expand that in the next few years for the C grade as well to provide everyone with a sort of uh, big time contest during the August timeframe. So that's one thing we're looking forward to to help work further to supporting Open and Inverness and their entire grading structure. You know, and we we mentioned um, earlier on that you're the first non-UK resident uh, to be president of the organization. Um, you know, does location really matter when it comes to a, a, a role like this, considering that the CPA is ostensibly a UK-based uh, organization? This was fortunate uh, enough for me to do it um, because of Zoom. I was wrong now. This was why it was possible. Uh, COVID, of course, helped facilitate because we're all in Zoom meetings anyway. Um, I think ideally, though, you do want a uh, British-based or a Scottish-based CPA president. Um, this, of course, wouldn't be possible. What, what I'm doing here wouldn't be possible without our great leadership team. I mean, the secretary, when I first started, was Ross Miller, and now it's Lockie Dick. They do a phenomenal job. I mean, they are the backbone of what we do. Our vice president, Peter McAllister, who also does the guide to the games, he's there in person and he works tirelessly. Um, and of course, Callum Beaumont is the chair of our grading committee. These three people being Scottish based essentially make it happen. Um, I help out and facilitate international stuff, but five time zones away, it can be challenging. The the system over there, and over there we say, uh, you know, in the UK, um, you know, it's quite different from the rest of the world where anybody over the age of 18, 18 and older, um, pretty much has to go up and play an open or professional sort of clasp, which is what the CPA is all about. Now, the clasp, the uh, competition league for amateur solo pipers is, you know, 20 years old now and run by the National Piping Center and allowing a place for amateur adult pipers uh, for a place for them to play in the UK. And now it's sort of clasp is sort of spread around the world with the online competitions that have been very successful too. Um, but do you, do you ever see a day when maybe CLASP uh, and the CPA might get together on a lot more competitions? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I already talked to Margaret Dunn about that and trying to work more closely with her, with the Piping Center. But at the end of the day, it's, I think, whoever runs those contests. Um, you, if I would love to see more CLASP competitions at Highland Games, but I think that conversation has to be had between games and class um, organization to make that happen. But as far as the uh, porousness, if you like, or the um, jumping between grade one and the C grade, we're still working on how that looks or how that might look to make sure everyone's in their proper grade and to make sure everyone can compete at an equitable level. You know, looking looking back, uh, or looking forward, actually, I should say, uh, you know, what are you looking forward to uh, when this, as far as the CPA goes? I mean, you've, you've talked about some things that you uh, feel you're proud of, highlights, accomplishments, the bronze medal, for example. Uh, what about coming up in the future? Uh, yeah, I, I've realized in my four years here that I, it, the best changes are incremental ones. So to take something that everyone as a CPA or as a bronze medal, excuse me, as that grows in importance, perhaps we can add the C grade version of that. We've already talked about something like the C grade championship in our committee meetings. Of course, it involves more work, but we want to make sure that the bulk of our membership um, gets something out of the value out of their membership for us. And expanding competitions like that is something people understand already. So it's not a major change in how they view the system. So if we can fill that out on a greater scale. I think that works best for everybody. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Um, and it occurs to us, you know, it comes up 
occasionally in conversation with people in interviews and things that not all competing pipers are members of the competing pipers association uh, particularly when they qualified for the the top tier it sounds like uh is your objective would you like to see more uh, or all competing pipers in the uk and and uh, around the world to participate in in uh uk competitions would you like to see them become members of the organization ideally yes but when i talk to those premier players that aren't members of the cpa or other players that message to me says we're not doing a good enough job at creating something that's worthwhile to them and on the one hand you might ask them to sort of give back from the many years of their membership that they can continue being members for the next generation but i think at the end of the day end of the day excuse me we can do a better job of supporting the P grade members so that they have something to give back for. And what what do you think some of those uh, things might be? Any ideas? To be honest, no. It's 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 a very interesting threading that needle for premier players. They don't need the CPA anymore. So at that point, it's just something that they might do out of the goodness of their heart. For us, we've helped them through that membership to get to the P grade in one sense. But I completely sympathize that. Um, they don't need us anymore in that regard. I think they we do offer them very much a reduced membership so they keep them on the certain boards. But the other thing, we are working with the Judges Association in Scotland to onboard all of our P-grade players in sort of a hybrid manner of what we call the supplementary judging list so that they are easily segued that they can play and judge in certain contests to reflect a more hybrid model that we see internationally. Well, Derek, it's been uh, been terrific talking to you just briefly today um, from Thank you so much. joining us from your, your home in Tinton Falls, New Jersey. And uh, yeah, really appreciate it. That's Derek Midgley, the president of the Competing Pipers Association, uh, the latest in our association leadership series. So stay tuned to Pipes Drums for more in our ongoing series with leaders of associations around the world. Mm -hmm.